An estimated 500 million litres of dangerous illicit alcohol is consumed in South Africa every year. Shocking indeed. According to the figures by Tax Justice South Africa, they're saying that, uh, you know, it's a very, very concerning issue. Now, earlier this week, Hauteng Provincial Commissioner Lieutenant General Tomim Tombeni and the Johannesburg District Commissioner Major General Max Masha destroyed liquor that was confiscated during the raid and closure of illegal liquor outlets in the province as part of addressing this persistent issue. Mahai Sudumelan, good evening. My name is Tapo Malukwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we look at the latest developments on illegal liquor in the Houghton province. Let me bring in my guest this evening who joins us via Zoom to have this conversation. Captain Jeff Pora, the Johannesburg Executive Police Communications Officer, to bring us up to speed on the latest developments. There, Captain, much appreciated for joining us. Welcome to the show. Captain, I'm not sure if you can hear me. Uh, my guest this evening is Captain uh, Jeff Porter from the Johannesburg uh, District SAPS. Captain, much appreciated for joining us. Welcome to the show. Uh, a very good evening to you, Tabo, and a very good evening to viewers. Uh, we really appreciate uh, this platform as the police. Much appreciated, Captain. I mean, let's talk about uh, the liquor that was destroyed earlier this week. Uh, I mean, what was its value and uh, where and when was it confiscated? Look, uh, this is some of the liquor that we've been confiscating um, uh, during our operations, uh, both within the district, Johannesburg, and uh, the, the, the province itself. Um, Captain, I'm not sure if uh, I lost you there, uh, but uh, just to get an understanding uh, for those who may not fully understand, uh, uh, what do we mean by illegal liquor and how dangerous is this substance? Look, uh, when we talk, we're talking of illicit, illicit liquor, it's, 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 it's alcohol that uh, was obtained or was produced illegally. Um, some most of the time, this kind of liquor you will find it um, in your illegal liquor outlets, illegal shabins, illegal nightclubs, and so on. That's where you'll find this uh, uh, kind of liquor, and it's dangerous for uh, human health to consume to consume such liquor. And also another problem with such liquor is that it 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 hampers or it it it, it kills our economy as the country because remember uh, these people they are they are evading tax when they've got access to such uh, to, to such liquor or if outlets have got uh, access to such liquor. Mm. So, oh, Captain, I want to understand now, um, how prevalent is the scourge of illegal alcohol in the province and uh, uh, where are we seeing most of, uh, you know, the illegal liquor? Is it uh, more in informal settlements, townships or affluent areas or just in general, it's, uh, you know, every single uh, uh, places that we have? Um, it's 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 starting to get out of it's starting to get out of hand. This is why we we're trying our best as the police to to nip this uh, sketch in the bud. You know, you you even find them in your most popular uh, uh, outlets. Um, as I, as I've indicated earlier to say, they 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 go into such spaces so that they can evade tax. So it it, it, does, it doesn't matter whether whether it's in informal settlements. Whether it's your babs, this uh, liquor is out there. And uh, the reason we're trying to get rid of it, like I indicated, is because it's dangerous for human health to consume such liquor. Mm. So who are we finding, you know, as the main culprits of creating and peddling this illegal uh, liquor and uh, why? Look, uh, um, it's cheaper to start with. Um, it, it, it won't compete with your normal, um, I'm just giving you an example, uh, big outlets. Uh, I'm afraid to market some of these people, you know, uh, I can't name them <laughs> on the screen, but uh, I'm going to use big business outlets. Um, you find that maybe, let's say, they sell it for, for 100 bucks, and then with this illicit liquor, you'll find that they'll sell it with half of a price of that, which makes it maybe 50 bucks or so. You know, I'm just giving an example. 
So this is why the, 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 it's becoming a booming business uh, for illicit liquor because it comes out uh, very cheap uh, for this uh, liquor outlet uh, business people. Mm. Um, um, so, so, so uh, Captain, I'm interested in finding out, uh, you know, are there any arrests that were made, uh, you know, during this, uh, uh, you know, raid? And also, um, are, are we likely to see uh, more people uh, being apprehended, uh, you know, in the various parts uh, that you will be conducting these operations? There's quite a number, uh, a substantial number of people that were arrested. As we've seen, as we're displaying the liquor on, on Wednesday there in, in Jobek Central or uh, Sub-Central uh, SAPS, um, the liquor, it's, it's from liquor outlets. It's not like we just collected it somewhere and came and display it. It was collected in various locations and suburbs at this uh, 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 illegal uh, 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 outlets. Um, some of some of these uh, uh, outlets are unlicensed, and then we collect such liquor. And then, um, obviously, uh, our our duty is to get rid of it once it's in our possession as the police. Mm. Captain Jeff Porter, we're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, let's uh, uh, delve deep and uh, you know maybe just talk more about. Uh, uh, ways in which community members can also play their part in making sure that uh, you know they uh, assist law enforcement in dealing with this scourge. Uh, our guest this evening is Captain Jeff Porter, the uh, Johannesburg Executive Communications Officer, who joins us to let us know more about the latest developments as far as illegal liquor in the city and the province is concerned. Let's take a quick breather. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Much appreciated for joining us. Now, before the ad break, we started the conversation on illegal liquor with uh, Johannesburg Executive Police Communications Officer, that's Captain Jeff Porter, who joins us uh, via Zoom as we continue the conversation. Captain, thank you for staying with us uh, this evening. Uh, I want us to talk more about, uh, you know, uh, uh, the uh, just to get a better understanding of how prevalence is the issue. But uh, since you've touched on that, um, uh, let's rather reflect on how communities can take part in assisting law enforcement in dealing with the scourge. Look, uh, I would like to encourage our communities to... to remember, these this liquor outlets, uh, most of the time they just mushroom in our locations, in informal settlements. So as soon as they see... A, that uh, there's more liquor outlets are uh, mushrooming. They need to report them to the police so that we can come and check and inspect them. Remember, at our police station, we've got uh, liquor officers uh, whom their responsibility is to deal with this uh, 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 liquor outlets. Uh, they check them on daily basis if they comply, if they are licensed, and so on. So we would really, as the police, to encourage the, the community to come forth and, and report uh, such much booming of, of uh, liquor outlets. Even the liquor board, uh, they are our partners. If they are afraid to come to the police, they can report this to the liquor board. Obviously, the, the liquor board will also inform us so that we accompany them to, to deal with this uh, sketch that is on the rise. Mm. Uh, for the layman, how can someone outlets? sport or recognize alcohol that is illegal. I mean, what should they uh, what should they be looking out for? I mean, you look at the packaging; they look the same, and it's 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 not easy to pick it up. Uh, you know, with uh, uh, you know, just an 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 open eye, if I may put it that way. Mm. Unfortunately, <laughs> this is one subject that needs uh, experts from the police. Uh, um, um, consumer goods; they are busy. Uh, training most of our officers so that they are able to to spot this kind of liquor. This is why I, I, I also indicated that we've got liquor officers uh, at the level of police station, at the level of the province, at the level of national, whom their responsibility is to go and do inspections. Whether it's a, it's a, it's a, a known brand or known uh, liquor outlet name, uh, top businesses, we inspect everybody so that we make certain that um, our people uh, don't consume or, or buy such uh, alcohol. Mm. Captain, you know, I'm, I, I wanted to ask you this question, especially 
looking at uh, you know the issue of compliance uh, uh, you know in terms of uh, uh, liquor outlets uh, or establishments adhering to their liquor licenses uh, as law enforcement have you ever had situations whereby uh, you know uh, a, 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 an establishment was supposed to have closed for instance at uh, 2 p i mean 2 a.m and then they would continue operating until um, 6 a.m. in the morning. Normally, in such situations, what, what is it that you do? Look, um, we are used to such problems whereby we would find that uh, a liquor outlet is operating within um, or ex extremely over the hours that uh, they, were, they were given to operate within. So normally uh, we would, 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 would issue fines for, for, for such liquor outlets, but we can't issue fines on, uh, all the time if we find you. Um, they know that we talk to them, we warn them, we find them. Um, you repeat, obviously, now you are pushing us to, 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 to talk to, to, to liquor board so that we can start withdrawing your license uh, because you are not complying. Mm. Just lastly, before I let you go, uh, Captain, do you believe we will get to a point where the illegal liquor issue is completely eradicated? And if so, uh, what will that take? And also, uh, you know, the measures that you've put in place in terms of addressing uh, this scourge, because, I mean, you've been um, highlighting this challenge for quite some time now as the police, and it seems like, uh, you know, um, uh, the issue... Yes, you are trying by all means to nip it in the bud, but uh, adherence remains a major challenge. Yes, um, as if our communities can work hand in glove with the police, if they see any suspicious movement, any suspicious uh, smells within their communities, because, you know, where a, a liquor is brewed... Um, Captain, I'm not sure if you can still hear me. Um, I think we've lost the captain there, Captain Jeff Porter uh, from the Johannesburg Executive Police Communications Office there. Uh, a very crucial statement that he was about to make there. Saying that, uh, so, uh, uh, to, to come forth and, and report such. Captain, I'm not sure if you can hear me. Uh, uh, we, we lost you a bit uh, there. Maybe you can just finalize that point before we wrap it up. Yeah, um, I was just saying uh, we, we encourage our communities to work hand in glove with us if they see any 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 suspicious movement. Uh, it looks like I lost you again, Tibos. Unfortunately, we seem to be having a problem with uh, the connection there. Uh, let me thank my guest, that's uh, Captain Jeff, for apologies for the technical glitch there, uh, Johannesburg Executive Police Communications Officer from the Johannesburg SAPS District, speaking to us about the illegal liquor issue in the city and uh, the uh, province. So we're going to park it there for now. So where to today continues right after the ad break. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching. So it's today. Much appreciated for joining us this evening. My name is Tabo Malukwane. We are getting closer to the end of the show, but we still continue the conversation on the latest developments on illegal liquor in the province. We now bring in the Gauteng Liquor Board, the Director for Client Relations Management, Cleo Budibe Lushaba, as we wrap up the conversation. She joins us via Zoom. Cleo, much appreciated for joining us. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Good evening, Tabo. Good evening to the viewers. Thank you for having me. Much appreciated. I mean, before we just get into uh, the issue, I want us to just, uh, you know, start by looking at your role as the Houghton Liquor Board and what are some of the various elements and issues in the sector that you guys oversee. Okay. Mainly the Houghton Liquor Board exists to regulate the liquor trade industry. So we are the regulators of the liquor, uh, of the Houghton Liquor Act within Houghton in this case. And in a nutshell, that's what it is. But of course, it doesn't end there. We do a lot of education to the liquor traders, schools. Um, we preach the gospel of underage drinking and many other activities. But in a nutshell, we regulate the liquor trade industry in Houghton. Mm. 
Um, let's speak about the seriousness of the issue of illegal liquor in the province and you know the consequences of its existence and sale. I mean, you must be concerned. I mean, recently you uh, you know you, you 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 did a program and you know there was liquor that was destroyed that uh, uh, you guys found in uh, the various communities that you visited. Absolutely. And one, I want to um, acknowledge that and validate the fact that it is concerning. Um, when we say illegal liquor, in this case, we're talking counterfeit goods. Um, the problem is obviously being counterfeit goods that affects the profitability to the manufacturers. But not only that, we're not sure what um, ingredients are there in the counterfeit goods. So yes, it is concerning. Hence, we have um, elevated and enhanced our compliance projects. We go to liquor outlets almost on a daily basis now. Of course, capacity does not allow us to be everywhere at the same time. But we do that. We target particular areas when we get to a liquor outlet, we don't only check the general compliance, but we also check the, the, the genuinity um, and the authenticity of the alcohol that they're selling. So yes, it is a serious concern as a country, health-wise, financially, and in many other ways. Mm. I mean, Cleo, what seems to be the problem? I mean, you've been, uh, you know, um, uh, preaching this for quite some time as uh, not only the Houghton and Liquor Board, but for the country in general. And it seems like, uh, you know, uh, compliance seems to be an issue when it comes to, to, to issues of uh, uh, trading uh, in, 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 in various townships, not only in townships, but also in the more, uh, you know, affluent areas uh, in, in, in the province. But uh, are there any stringent measures that uh, you have in place as uh, the Liquor Board to dis decrease the availability of this illegal, uh, you know, liquor. Okay, let me probably start here. Um, the Houghton liquor, part, uh, liquor Board for the longest part has been enforcing compliance like trading hours, regulating the noise level, etc. So the illegal or illicit alcohol, it's a new thing. Well, not very new, but it is fairly new. So um, right, right now we are starting with. Process um, where uh, um, when we go in, we don't only look out for the things that I've mentioned and much more, but we also look at the actual uh, bottle to see if it's genuine or not. So, as you're asking the question, what could be the problem? We're not really sure. Firstly, most of these come from outside our country. That's one. Um, two, you would find that um, liquor traders would say, well, we cannot afford buying the regional uh, products as a result because this is cheaper. This is what we end up doing. So there is a number of dynamics around that with the economy, the way it is, but also just people not understanding the seriousness and the potential harm that could come as a result of um, products that we, we cannot attest for. We don't know what the ingredients are and so on. Mm. As we wind down the conversation, Cleo, I mean, speak to us about the liquor licenses and the various criteria that needs to be met in order for someone to legally be able to trade in alcohol and whether this also covers the quality of alcohol and making sure uh, it's safe. Yeah, very good question, especially now that we are approaching the festive season. You'd find an ordinary person would be thinking, well, we're going to the festive season. I want to be able to make money. I'm just thinking I'll just decide one day to go to a bottle store or wherever, buy alcohol and sell alcohol. It doesn't work that way. Because of the nature of alcohol being potentially harmful in various ways, um, it is regulated. So firstly, as you had asked the question, what must one do to sell alcohol firstly you must be licensed there is a number of requirements that come with that because we need to ensure that the person that has the liquor license that is trading is a fit and proper person who would know the right and the wrong who would be able to say no you're under 18 i can't sell alcohol to you or it is now 2 a.m i am closed you know whatever the the the, the regulation would be that they need to adhere to so it is very important um, that uh, people get licenses you don't just wake up one day and do that 
that. Moreover, currently we are noticing that um, our traders, the, the original South Africans, have gone and sold their liquor licenses to foreign nationals, unfortunately. So we now need to do that education on that side. Remember, according to our Liquor Act, uh, unless if you have been verified as a South African uh, um, citizen, you're not, you're not allowed to have a, a liquor license. There are processes and procedures that we go through to ensure that um, you are a, a legal citizen and ensure that as you trade, you're going to be trading so legally, but also conforming and complying to uh, with the laws um, of liquor trade. And just by the way, if I can, I can add, not only the laws of liquor trade, as in the Houting Liquor Act, for you to have a business, you know, you need to go to the municipal office. They will give you regulations in terms of how do you run your business. Should they be fire at your outlet what must you do um, how do you take care of the environment what do you do with the cans and the bottles and the lids that cover the, the bottles so there is a number of things so it is um, uh, um, very um, complex I'll say complex for you to get a license because we educate you before um, to ensure that by the time you receive your liquor license you know the do's and the don'ts of the game basically uh, Cleo, um, uh, unfortunately, we ran out of time, but I'm still going to ask you this question. I want to know exactly where we are sitting in terms of uh, digitizing, you know, the liquor si license process. Uh, how, how, you know, how are we faring? Are we, are, are we almost there? We are there. We have arrived. <laughs> Um, so we, yes, um, just maybe to put it into context for our viewers as well. Now, for you to apply for a, for a liquor license in Gauteng in particular, you don't necessarily have to come to our offices. Yes, we have that option. Even when you get to the office, we would still assist you, uh, um, you know, online. So the system is working. You're able to, at the comfort of your own home, without having spent time and money on petrol and, you know, traveling, you're able to apply for your license. You're able to upload all the required documents so the system is up and running we have already received applications from the system we have already uh, started considering the, the applications so yeah in a very nutshell the system is working 100 percent and um, anyone and everyone is able to apply online for a liquor license thank you much appreciated uh, for joining us this evening it's always a pleasure man thank you thank you tabo thank you viewers that was uh, Cleo Budibe Lushava, the, the Director of Client Relations Management at the Houting Liquor Board, uh, joining us to wrap up the conversation on illegal liquor, saying that, look, it's a concern. Uh, it seems like uh, compliance remains a major issue there. Uh, let me thank my earlier guest, that's uh, Captain uh, Jeff Porra there from uh, the uh, South African uh, Police Service. Uh, that uh, the communications officer there in Johannesburg uh, district who also joined us to let us know uh, about the latest measures the police have put in place to deal with illegal liquor. On that note, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email at Soweto Today at Soweto TV. You can call or WhatsApp us at 081 and the rest of the team. It's a good night from us, and thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the latest news updates up next with Preeti Gwenya. Bye-bye.